So for this lecture, we will look at how anticipated changes in the future price of a good can affect the current price of that certain good. So let's examine this using supply and demand analysis. So we have our traditional supply and demand graph have quantity as the x-axis and price as the y-axis. And let's look at the example of the market for TVs. Now assume that the average TV costs a thousand dollars at the moment. And now there has been a change in the supply side conditions so that the, the consumers anticipate that the average price of a TV will cost two thousand dollars from June 2014. And so currently it is December 2013. So in half a year's time we'll see that the average price of the TV is anticipated to have increased to $2,000. So assuming that a TV has a relatively elastic supply curve and also an elastic demand curve for simplicity, we'll see that at the moment the equilibrium price of the TV is $1,000 and the equilibrium quantity traded is at Q1, whatever Q1 might be. Now, because we can see that in the future we will see that the price of a TV would increase to $2,000, people would tend to buy more. So, anticipated changes, anticipated increase in price would lead to more purchases currently. So what this means is because economic agents act to maximize their living standards and to minimize the opportunity costs, because they believe that the price of TVs would increase to $2,000 per TV within six months, because at the moment TVs are only $1,000, they would have to increase the demand for TVs now. So the demand curve for the TV will shift to the right D2. And what this means is now because the demand curve is shifted to the right, we'll see that the corresponding quantity demanded is at Q2 at the moment, which is different from the equilibrium price at E1 here. And so because the supply at the equilibrium price is at Q1, and now the new equilibrium or the, the new quantity demanded is at Q2, we'll see that there is now a shortage of supply. So because there have been anticipated changes to the price of the TV, there is now a shift to the right of the demand curve and now a corresponding shortage in supply. So what this means is that producers see that the supply is short and seeing that because they're selling all their TVs they will up the price. So this would reflect as an in a expansion in supply. And concurrently, while this expansion in supply is occurring, because consumers act to maximise their living standards by minimising their costs, because they see the prices increasing, that they will contract their demand. And slowly, this uh, market will reach its new equilibrium point at point P one and Q1. And let's, let's call this QE for equilibrium and P for equilibrium. So this is the new equilibrium price. So this is the new equilibrium price at Q2 for example. Okay, so originally the equilibrium price was at Q1 and now this has moved to Q2. So what this actually suggests is that anticipated changes in the future price would actually be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the prophecy is self-fulfilling. And what this means is that because we anticipate changes or increases to the future price of a good, then therefore the actual price of the good would increase from $1,000 to the new price equilibrium at PE. And the corresponding quantity traded would also increase from Q1 to QE. And so the market has reached a new equilibrium point. 
And this relates back, if we look at the macro economy, this relates to how um, anticipated inflation would actually fulfill itself in actual inflation. And that's the concept we'll look at in first order lectures. Okay, so now let's look at the converse. What happens if there is an anticipated decrease in the price of the TV? And this relates also to the concept of deflation. But let's look at the single market for the moment and how TV is $1,000 now and we expect it to decrease to $800 from June 13 to uh, December 13. Okay, so in six months time, the TV will be $200 cheaper. And because TV is, a TV is not a necessity, and we can wait out that extra six months to save the $200, because as rational consumers, we are looking for the minimum cost. We can see that the demand for the TV now will be lower, because we expect the price to have decreased to $800 in six months time. So using the same demand and supply analysis, we have price initially at P1, which is also $1,000, and the quantity traded at Q1, and we have an equilibrium at E1. So demanders are happy, suppliers are all happy, the market is clear, and we are at equilibrium. So what happens now is because we anticipate a change or a decrease in price, the demand for the TV now will decrease at every level, and this means that we are less willing to purchase a TV now for $1,000 because we anticipate the TV, the price of the TV to decrease to $800. So what this suggests is now, at this equilibrium point at QE, that that's the supply, but now the new demand point is at Q2. So now we can see that because the supply is at Q1 and because demand, the quantity demanded is at Q2, we will experience a surplus in supply. And what this means is the TVs or the market for TVs is not being cleared. So to, to help clear the market, the suppliers would actually decrease their price. So that would incentivize pe people to increase their demand. So here there would be a contraction in supply. And because price is cheaper, producers will be less willing to supply because that would um, not maximize their profits. So they would reallocate their resources, assuming their resources are mobile, to other productive uses. And now the price has decreased to P2, and we will have a new equilibrium quantity at E. Quantity E. This new equilibrium can be denoted E2. So as we can see, because there has been also contraction in supply, there will be an expansion in demand as the price decreases because consumers seek to maximize their living standards by minimizing opportunity costs. And so, so because the price is decreasing, uh, consumers are more likely or more, more incentivized to actually purchase the TV at this point in time. And now we can see that because there are anticipated changes in the future price of a good, the quantity demanded currently would actually decrease from Q1 to Q2 because buyers would be less willing to purchase now because they would be foregoing a greater opportunity cost by purchasing the TV at $1,000. And so because there is an anticipated change or a decrease in the price of the TV, we will see that current expenditure would also decrease. And so the quantity demanded now would from fall from Q1 to the new equilibrium point at QE and the price or the equilibrium price for the TV will fall from P1 originally to its new equilibrium price at P2.